this is an extra special, episode 48, the Made by Google event, on Sunday, October 9th, 2016. And now, omelets aren't desserts. This next special is hosted by Ian R. Buck and Ryan Rappersat. You can find the show notes for this episode of the Nexus special at thenexus.tv slash ns48. All right, so it's that time of year again, fall, which means that Google is announcing new Nexus phones, right, Ryan? Nexus phones? Nexus phones? Ian, are you serious? I That's that that's so last year. Oh. We what? only talk about Pixel phones here. This is now the Pixel.tv. Nice. Yep. Yes. Uh, yeah, so normally about right now, we would be having, we'd be talking about a Google event where they announce, uh, you know, a new Nexus phone, maybe a new Nexus tablet, um, probably probably not much else. You know, they might show some software things or yeah. maybe a new Chromecast occasionally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but this year they shook things up a little bit and they called this event the Made by Google event. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, the hashtag Made by Google mm-hmm. event. No? Okay. And, yeah, so they unveiled a bunch of new hardware products. Uh, I think most of them are from entirely new product lines. Um, and Sort of. Yeah. Some of them were announced already at, like, Google I.O. of this year, and this is kind of their official release. Uh, but others were never talked about officially before, and, mm-hmm. and this is the first time that we've gotten a real good look at them. Yep. So if you want to look at the or watch the full keynote that they put out on YouTube, uh, we've got a link to that in the show notes, so you can uh, click on that for your viewing pleasure. Yes. Yep. Uh, otherwise, stick around with us, and we will talk about and analyze the different stuff that they unveiled at the keynote. Mm-hmm. Uh, so first up, they they emphasized the new Google Assistant a lot at this event. Um, as kind of like a, not just a, a Google search for websites, but like a Google search for your world, um, which, which, you know, it, it's not going to be able to help you find your car keys yet, probably. But uh, but a lot of the stuff that is in your life that has data associated with it, um, Google should be able to help you with that. So that's the idea behind this Google Assistant. And it's kind of an evolution from their whole Google Now. Um, and now on tap. And now on tap. And, the, you know, the the voice command thing that wasn't quite called the assistant, but basically worked like an assistant. Right. Yeah. Um, and, they yeah, they spent a good amount of time at the beginning of their presentation just kind of touting how much machine learning they've been doing over the last few years and how they've been improving their systems and everything. Uh, to kind of assure us that this this is like their area of expertise and this is the direction that they're going mm-hmm. with everything. Yeah, so I think this is really interesting. Um, so if you recall a uh, previous um, episode that we have recorded, which was the Allo episode, mm-hmm. where the Google Assistant first appeared um, for its very short time on this planet, um, because now everybody's uninstalled Allo, as far as I know. Right. Um, but that's why they're putting it in other products. Incidentally, <laughs> what we wanted is now here sort of right so it's it's the google assistant you can type to or you know i guess sort of talk to Mm -hmm. just actually in the phone in a normal sensible place yes but only in one phone right now well too technically no Uh -uh. fine okay yeah so uh we'll get to the phone part later but but that is to be clear it is only available in two phones i mean you can't even use it on a nexus phone you can only use it on these new pixel phones uh and and in the google home Sure. Yeah. That's not even a phone. No. It's a but, weird But, but if, we're, if we're listing all of the places that you can use it, that's one of the places. It's it's um, annoying to me that you can't even use the Google Assistant in a browser. Yeah. Yeah. Just, that's, uh, I'm just, it's, it's hard for me to comprehend how that is broken even. It's got to it's be coming. They've got, uh, where what, where uh, are they going to put it? Like, what is it going to do? Uh, I mean, they've got this lovely search button on Chrome ca- uh, Chromebooks. Oh, and where they um instead caps of the lock. caps lock, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's great for Chromebooks, but like, so on the Google website, so Google dot com, mm-hmm. where do they put the assistant? It would have to just like they would have to take over that search bar. Oh dear, because you know they don't want to have more than one thing on their homepage, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, all right, so so yeah, they're they're kind of setting us up as the like next the next evolution in technology after mobile is going to be 
artificial intelligence, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's where they're going with this whole this whole concept. Um, so let's talk about the Google Home because that's the first. I think it was the first uh, product that they that they talked about on stage. Mm-hmm. Um, this was originally announced at Google I/O. Yep. Um, so a lot of its capabilities they you know were already talked about. Um, they talked a little bit more about some of the hardware that's in it. Like uh, they've got dual microphones on the top of it to understand uh, our voices at long range and also in noisy environments. Um, it's got a capacitive touch surface uh, on the on that kind of top angled surface. Uh, for doing things like controlling volume, if your voice isn't a good option for you know for that kind of command, um, they talked about the triple speaker system that it has there in the base, um, where yeah, it's got three speakers that are facing in different directions, so mm-hmm. that it can serve as a speaker to play stuff, uh, no matter where you are in the room. Um, they talked about which music apps are, are going to be available on it. Uh, so, you know, obviously we've got YouTube Music and Google Play, because that's Makes sense. Google's own things. Yep. Uh, but then also Spat- Spotify, Pandora, TuneIn, and iHeartRadio are, are partnering for the launch. Yeah, it seems reasonable enough. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I, I wonder how much effort a like an app developer would have to put in if they already have Chromecast enabled on mm-hmm. their app for... This functionality? Yeah, for Google Cast I... to, or to be able to work through the... Uh, assistant I, does it present itself as a chromecast audio it might i'm not sure mm-hmm. but i i know that you can tell like tell it verbally to play something on a different google cast mm-hmm. device in your house right so i don't know if you can whip out your phone and through the screen select the google home as an item to play stuff on mm-hmm. i'm not sure about that yeah, we'll have to find that out sometime. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, so uh, also because it has the assistant built in, you know, you can do all sorts of voice command like stuff, have a right. conversation with it, ask it questions. Um, the answers that it's getting are, are, of course, coming from the knowledge graph. Mm-hmm. And uh, and even if the knowledge graph doesn't have the direct answer, uh, it'll do its best to try and find like a snippet from a website that'll answer your question, maybe hopefully. So did they use the terminology knowledge graph in the presentation? Yeah. I think it's really interesting because you don't hear Google talk much, if at all, about the knowledge graph anymore. Not since they launched it, no. Funny. No. Well, you did hear about it for a little bit after, but uh, ever since, um, you know, all of the uh, social integration has been tried to uh, be forgotten, the knowledge graph has also sort of been left, sort of. Yeah, and I'm not sure why, because it doesn't have much to do with the social integration at all. Yeah, I think it was just because it was paired up, um, you know, around the same time, and mm. then just mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, that's an old thing. We yeah. use it sort of, but don't don't worry about it. I I think that it like using the knowledge graph answers isn't really a new thing either, because I'm no, pretty sure that that's what like Google now has been using to answer your questions verbally. Yeah, definitely. Anyway. Um, one thing that I'm really intrigued by is the, like, my day mm-hmm. feature that they talked about, where you can just, like, you know, you get up in the morning, and you go down to the kitchen, and you're like, okay... What am I doing today? Yeah, what am I doing today? And uh, and it'll give you, like, kind of a morning briefing, right? So mm-hmm. it'll give you, like, your calendar events, it'll probably give you what the weather's going to be like, um, stuff like that. Yep. And this brings up, in in my mind, a question of, does the Google home support multiple accounts and this is probably the most important thing for well it doesn't really matter to me but for normal people um one of the things that the the what is it called the amazon echo is that what it's yeah called? right it doesn't as far as i know recognize multiple people Mm-mm. which is a major shortcoming i think when multiple people are using it yeah the it, amazon echo also doesn't have to worry about trying exactly. to get information from multiple people's accounts exactly but on on this on this device normal people do have their own google account yeah and there's a treasure trove of information to mine there to make this useful to them specifically mm-hmm and without having the ability to recognize multiple people, this will be much less useful. Yeah. So I guess it could just use the account that it was set up with. and That's that's what I think is happening. Um, I, I vaguely recall seeing somebody talking about that it only supports one account, at least at launch. Mm. Um, and for, for my household, 
I think it's not going to be a huge problem because I'm the only one who actually is thorough about sure. keeping like my Google Calendar up to yep. date, and I you know to dos and tasks. And yeah, exactly. And stuff. Um, yeah. However, however, uh, I can definitely see it becoming a problem if like other people uh, are you know using it to say like, hey, play such and such a song that I like, and that's going into my like Google Play Music right. history. Mm-hmm. Uh, messing up the suggestions that Google Play gives me right. on my homepage kind of thing. I wonder, I, I'm sure Google has the tech to, you know, distinguish between people's voices mm-hmm. enough. And of course, they could go, th- you know, they could put you through a training cycle. Right. Right. So I, there's no reason they couldn't do it eventually. I, I I don't see a reason why they couldn't do it now because like they already, when you, when you set up the hot word detection on your phone mm-hmm, like exactly. that is already there for it to recognize your voice and not, and not other people's right right so exactly. when my sister tries to activate my phone uh because she's a little butthead <laughs> like it doesn't do it because she sounds nothing like me right yeah well so they're gonna have to make an interface for it they're gonna have to make it accessible for normal people to do mm-hmm. and it'll have to be some kind of you know thing they can do with sort of out of screen Right, so right, because there is no screen. Right, and so they'll have to have a thing that tells you when you get it out of the box, like, "Hey, have everybody do this thing mm-hmm. on the thing, and it'll work better for everybody." Right, but then how do you tie your Google account to it? So then you do have to have a screen on your phone or your laptop or your tablet. Yeah, you might have to go through some sort of setup process similar to like the Chromecast, right. through your phone, and it and they have to get that you know to not be awful, and Google has a hard time with that kind of thing. <laughs> Yeah. Um, speaking of uh, Chromecast, Google Cast, yeah, you can uh, use the Google Home to control other smart home devices. Mm-hmm. So, you, yeah, you can tell it to cast music to the kitchen speakers or to the, you know, do some Netflix thing on the living room TV or whatever. That's cool. Um, if you have, like, certain brands of, you know, the Hue mm-hmm. smart lights, it can control those. Um, I suppose if you have a Nest, probably that ties in. Um, that would be really funny if it wasn't supported. Oh, man. Wow, that would be quite a travesty. There's a firewall. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we've got yeah we've got smart home stuff getting set up, and this is kind of placed as the hub of, of the center of, of everything for, for smart home stuff. Yeah, I think it's pretty nice. Um, I'll get one. I think my favorite thing about it right now is that it can play audio on multiple devices at once, mm-hmm. which is a thing that I can't do through the normal Chromecast interface and kind of bugs me, mm-hmm. right? Because if I want to be able to, like, walk from the kitchen to my living room and not have to, like, switch right. between those speakers mm-hmm. and my TV, like, that's a that's a chore. Right. Yeah. Um, also, if you have multiple Google Homes in your house, uh, they work pretty darn well. Well, they're supposed to anyway. We don't know. It's not out yet. Um It'll, you know, figure out which one's closest to you, probably based on how loud you are, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and that's the one that will respond to you. It'd be funny if you could trick one in talking to the other. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's When you said that, that's immediately what I was drawn to. <laughs> uh, it's like, okay, Google, repeat after me, and then something. <laughs> uh, it's like having a couple of chat bots talking yeah. to each other, right? I yeah. really want this to happen now. Uh, all right, so... What, uh, th- this device is, uh, retailing for $130. How do you feel about that? I feel pretty good about that. Me too. I, I definitely will, I'll, I'll be buying one, mm-hmm. uh, unless, you know, I'm going to be waiting until after launch to see what, you know, what people are saying about it. Like, if there's some serious problem with it, yeah, then I'll hold off. I'll, I'll get one immediately. Uh, did you already buy one? Or are they on pre-order I yet? don't think so. Okay. Um, so, for $130, you're getting a pretty good deal here. It's cheaper than the Echo. Is it okay? Yeah, because I think it's one seventy nine. Okay. Oh, right. They they have their little portable echoes right. that they are less the, though. They have the dot. I think is what it's called. Yeah. And so I think that's really nice that they have a a, a reasonably priced option here. Mm-hmm. Um, the, but that does ask the question. So what's the even cheaper option look like next year? Yeah. So it's the same thing, but just without the you know huge three speaker setup. Uh huh. Right. Um. You know, hundred thirty dollars is pretty decent for this. You know, it's uh, if Apple can get away selling an Apple TV from three years ago for ninety nine dollars, <laughs> then this is okay. And yeah, and and as far as like competition in the space goes, uh, they're pretty early. 
They They're are number yeah. two. Yeah, and I, and I have a lot of faith in Google being able to have the best product in this area because right. that's like for one thing all of my data is already in Google's system, right? Mm-hmm. So that's a huge part of this. But also like Google has demonstrated already that they do artificial intelligence really well, right. that they have the data to back it up, that they can actually understand what people are asking and find that, you know, information because they have the search engine with the knowledge exactly. graph and everything. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Um it just all needs to be tied up in a nice convenient package. Right. And Google has a really hard time doing that though. <laughs> so there's a lot of different competing groups at Google. And by competing, I mean competing. Some groups get into products and some don't. So if they, you know, suddenly forget about, um, you know, Gmail for some reason. I was just thinking about how, Gmail. How, how? How do you forget about Gmail? You can't forget that. Right. And it's not going to say, you've got mail. It's not going to say that. It'd well, be funny. Yeah, I think that... Uh... I mean, I think that Google Now is a good example of them tying everything together in a really nice way. And it seems like this is the next evolution of Google Now. So I do have a lot of faith in it working well. Um, That brings up an interesting point. So one of the things I love about Google Now-ish is that it will occasionally tell me on my notification tray here that, oh, it's 45 minutes to home or, you know, Mm -hmm. 34 minutes to work. Do you think this will ever have unsolicited responses I mean, I think that that kind of thing would fit into, like, the My Day feature, um, Mm -hmm. but I'm not sure. Like, I don't think it'll just suddenly pipe up if nobody's spoken to it. It'd be really cool. That'd be... uh, But how is it supposed to know that somebody's around? Oh, it is listening, isn't it? (laughs) Well, and and it could, of course, just, you know, look at the phone's location somehow. Right, yeah, but I don't think that my phone's location is going to be specific enough for it to know if I'm upstairs in my room or downstairs in the kitchen. Yeah, there might be some tricks they can do. Possibly nearby, Android nearby. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, that unknown feature that nobody knows about. Yeah, wink, that, wink. But is somehow still implemented in Pocket Casts. Have you been catching any cats? I have. I have so many cats. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> and I did think of something uh, that kind of concerns me. When we get to Android O, will my cats carry over? I don't know. I this is important to me. Well, do you even believe they would? survive a, a wipe and a no of course not no they're not being backed up i don't expect that why not it's you know just a small little blob of data <laughs> okay um, so um what about actions on google so this is essentially what they're just calling the api for developers to tie in their stuff for google home to be able to do actions with them right and it's good that they're actually doing this not like a year later, six months later, they're doing it now. <laughs> yeah, well, ideally they would have been doing this before launch and telling developers sure. about it. But, uh, I mean, especially since they announced the device and then we had like four to five months before of it actually nothing. launched. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so they're talking about uh, things where you can define what type of information you're going to need from your users, you know? So they use the example of, like, let's say that I am a developer at Uber and I'm, you know, building the actions for for the integration into Google Home. Um, You know, the the kinds of information that I'll need to know is, like, um, you know, am I going to need an Uber X or an Uber XL? Where am I going to? Where am I coming from? Stuff like that. Um, And so, so then... That enables Google Home to build a conversation with the user so that it can get all of that information and then, you know, go and reserve an Uber. Yeah, seems reasonable. Yep. Why do we have source equals the nexus.tv at the end of it? Don't worry about it. (laughs) Uh, um, So, yeah, that's hopefully people will be supporting that. Um, if, If the support is anywhere near the amount of support for Google Cast... Uh, I think that we're going to be in a good good situation. I think a lot of apps will struggle to find useful things to do with it other than, like, how many apps can it, you know be interacted with verbally? And also, for example, what would Facebook ever use this? No, probably not. Would, would the Twitter mm. app ever use this? No, probably not. Yeah, social media is a weird case. Right, but those are some of the biggest applications people potentially can use. Yeah. Snapchat's never going to use it. Instagram's no. never going to use it. So what... You keep bringing up social media stuff, though. Like... Right, but those are also the biggest apps. Well, but, like, Google Home is meant to work with stuff that is, like, an an app that brings you to another product kind of thing, right? Sure. Um, I, guess, so like, I guess Google make... Home won't bring you to yourself since you are the product. Uh, yes? What? <laughs> 
Hmm. But like, you know, making they love to use the example of making reservations at a restaurant, right? Sure, but I've never had to do that once in my no, life. No, right, because, you know, we're trash. And we don't go to fancy places. But if I was filthy rich and needed a reservation at a restaurant, I wouldn't need a robot to do it. I would have a person. <laughs> a yeah. real assistant. Someday it'll be our valet as well. Hmm. All right, let's talk about the next physical product that they announced. Uh, and this was one that we haven't heard about before. Sort of. I mean, this sort of, um, you know, is the next generation of OnHub. Yeah. Um, it just has a real name. And it and it's, yeah, it's not like we're partnering with so-and-so right. to make this thing. Uh, and it does work different. Um, so this one's called Google Wi-Fi. And it is an expandable Wi-Fi network, um, so you can buy multiple of these little routers and place them throughout your house to improve your coverage. Um, and it also comes with, uh, you know, some some simplified uh, apps for controlling the network, right? So you can like easily pause, um, you know, your your kids' devices to get them to come down to dinner or whatever. Right. Um, yeah. So apparently. Pa- Adults in a family don't have to follow net neutrality rules. Well, <laughs> I, I um no, no they don't. So uh, I think this is really uh, I, I like how they look. It's a really cool thing. So it how much does it cost? Because I think that's probably the most important. Three hundred dollars for a three pack. And how much for a single? I don't remember. One twenty nine. There you go. Hey, so, that sounds familiar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a really nice idea, and you know it, it works. I'm, I'm sure it works well with all of their other networking tech and, you know, their devices have been tested with it, and I'm sure it works just fine. This is a really common thing right now to get these um, multiple AP setups. So, like, I don't remember what the name is, but um, Ubiquiti is doing it with the product they have. Um, and there's another product that's frequently advertised on, you know, podcasts. Oh, that, sure. That we listen to. I have no idea what it's called because I just tune out. Um but they're all in this similar price range, you know. It's you know one costs around 120 bucks, and then three costs around 300 bucks. Okay. So it's perfect. It's a clone of what everybody else is doing, with the Google name on it. Yeah, with the with the G on it. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't know if um, I need this though. Well, we have fairly small houses. Right. So we you know you just put your router so- like in the center of the house and mm-hmm. and it reaches everywhere. Um, I'm thinking about this for my church because that's been yeah. a, a pain point for like years and years and Put years. Put one on each floor. Is, or, yeah, you know, the, one in the front, one in the back. Right now, the router uh, sits in the main office, which is in the upper, you know, left hand corner of the the building. And so, if you're down in the fellowship hall, you don't get anything, mm-hmm. which is a real problem because that's where like our projector is, and you know, this uh, fancy Bluetooth player with with some smart tv like applications built in we can't use any of those because there's no internet down there right so i want i want to point out one interesting thing i was just reading here on the spec sheet and this is not something you see on normal routers ever really Mm -hmm. it has 512 megs of memory like ram oh that's a lot yeah most routers come with maybe 64 sometimes 128 but that's it Mm -hmm. but then it also has four gigs of flash memory Presumably for a cache of some sort, so that would be you know if they if they if they have the intelligence. Not that I recommend it, but if they have the intelligence to, for example, cache a YouTube video, mm. hmm, pretty clever. And then doesn't say what where the processor is from, but it is a quad core CPU. What is going on here? And so you can get three of them for three hundred bucks. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> well then, now you do have to join the wait list. This is not available yet. Um, or if it is available, maybe they just sold out. I, I'm not sure. Mm. Wow, I'm apparently joining the waitlist then. I clicked the button. Oops. Oops. Um, yeah, so pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. Uh, all right, Chromecast Ultra. This is uh, essentially, I mean, what it boils down to is it's a 4K Chromecast. Yes, it, that is exactly what it is. And I, I, um, I wonder about this product. Yeah, because if I mean, if you're fancy enough to have a 4K television, uh, are you going to be limiting yourself to just a Chromecast, right? Or are you right. going to want something that has more functionality? Like, are you going to get the Nvidia Shield, right, Android exactly. TV, and that has so. enough power to actually do something? Mm-hmm. And and sure, this is allegedly 1.8 times faster, which is not a multiple of an integer, which means it's fake. Um, okay. 
So I don't know if I believe it. What's cool about it? It does have a it does have the Ethernet port. Yes, I noticed that. That and made me happy. That makes sense, except they just introduced a product that's supposed to make your Wi-Fi amazing and epically incredible. <laughs> yeah. And yet, here's some Ethernet for you. Right. Now, of course, 4K probably will saturate your entire network, so this is convenient. Um, but I, I do have a deeper question. Does this mean that Android TV is dead again? I'm not sure. Because, um, I mean, yeah, the, the most recent android tv product which was from from google specifically is the nexus player right and what's dead nexus Nexus. so is it is it dead again i mean this doesn't preclude nexus player like devices android tv devices but it's sort of it's again not right there and yeah, so here's here's the question, right? Like, Android TV was specifically set up as something that other manufacturers could make. Sure. Right? And so Because we've got does. NVIDIA's. We've got, uh, I think, Razer made one, maybe. Mm. Um, but, like, Google Cast, you don't think of that as a thing that other manufacturers can make, but they actually can. Sure. Like, Vizio just came out with a speaker system that has Google Cast built in. And all of their modern TVs also come mm-hmm. with that cast layer yeah right yeah. um which is i think yeah it's not quite an android tv layer right it, 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 it is, is not a, android tv it, at it all we Google have one cast. at work it is awful do not buy it right because you couldn't set it up more than that in the fringe <laughs> uh but uh so this chromecast ultra it costs 70 dollars it's fine uh, 70 that's yeah i think that's pretty pretty right what so it's double it's two chromecasts yeah yeah which is, yeah, you know, four times the resolution, so why not? Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> uh, I just think that, so what do they do next year? So does the, is there a Chromecast 3 next year? Like, where does it stop? Like, what is the, wait, what's the next part? We don't of, stop until everybody's got one. What's we, They did say they had an absurd number of purchases of these Chromecast devices. I believe it. Yeah, I, me too, because I have like eight. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them's still in its box, apparently. Yeah. Well, I think it's time for the uh, feature. Yes, the the real marquee product that everybody came here to to hear about. Yep, so and the, then to cry about. I well, it depends on mm. how you view it, right? Okay, well. okay so Pixel phones. Woohoo! So yeah, these are the Nexus is dead, but the Pixel lives on. <laughs> so it begins. It does, yeah. Uh, so what this is is uh, Google has dropped the whole concept of uh we're teaming up with some other manufacturer they're going to like make the hardware we're gonna have input into the actual design of it but they're they're ultimately really making it right instead and they're going to design the whole thing and then still have another oem partner make it well right because i mean they but that's that's how you do it right is you're manufacturing something you need somebody else's um factories to sure. make it right because google you never doesn't own think... those yet of Qualcomm, I don't mean Qualcomm, I mean Foxconn being an OEM partner. You don't, they're just, they're literally, their job, their business is to make phones and right. other products. HTC is a phone designing company, though. Are they anymore? Aren't they? Technically, the, the um, whatever 10 um, did bump their sales this quarter and last quarter. Okay. So, I guess... I haven't heard a whole lot about it. Like, when your sales are really low, it's easy to bump them. Sure. Yeah, right? that's true. So, the question is, is is the Nexus really dead, or is this one of those things like Android Silver? Like, oh, we're going to go to Android Silver. <laughs> oh, we're not going to go to Android Silver here. Let's just ship this emergency Nexus 6. Um, <laughs> did it happen again? I guess that's my question. Well, I guess that really depends on how they treat the software on it. Um, and I'll get into that later yes when we start talking about the features so before we do that let's talk about how it actually physically is yes so it is made of aluminum and glass um if you're looking at the bottom guess which part's glass the front whoa and half of the back yeah the top half of the back is glass uh and with with kind of a little fingerprint sensor in the middle yeah of that glass and then the bottom half of the back is aluminum um an aluminum that we are all familiar with hmm it looks just like the iPhones. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah it's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they also are kind of reworking the aesthetics of the software. Um, so they have now a round app icon scheme for their launcher. I don't like that at yeah, all. I wasn't a big fan of that. 
Um, some there there was a thing a few years ago. You you were you were around when it happened. It was called material design. Yes, and it was supposed to unify the platform uh-huh. by providing guidelines on how to make icons and uh-huh. how to make and how to make everything look. And guess what company made those guidelines? Mm-hmm. I think it was a company that started with a G right. and ended in a Google. Uh-huh. Google, I think, is what it's called. Wow. And guess what company just threw all those out the window? The same company. What do you know? Hmm. Weird. <sighs> Luckily, we've already solved that problem for ourselves by using Action Launcher. Now, now I, I, I don't know. Um, in, in, in the new launcher, which is, I believe, called the Pixel Launcher, does it bring those icons the round versions itself or do the application icons actually change permanently in the play store too oh uh well i think that since i mean take a look at it right now because the pixel phone is basically out right so those those apps have to have the the version that's going to be on the pixel already released right not necessarily do you think they're going to update every single one of those right on launch day yeah oh boy um because I mean, like all, all of the, for example, the the uh, the Gmail app here, which mm-hmm. is you know the standard Android app that every phone must have, it looks like a normal Gmail icon. It's not round yet. Yeah. Whereas the Google icon is round, but that one's okay. Because it's just a G. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, right. But like, yeah, when you look at the Pixel phones that people have been shown, right? Like they already have the round app icons. Yeah. So I think it's just a different icon pack. For it, it. If that's what they do, then I'm okay with it. Yeah, me too. But if they don't do that, then I'm not okay with it. Um, and like I've seen some of them where somebody had like installed a couple of other apps on the demo unit, and and mm-hmm. you know those app icons are still their normal ones. So mm. okay, they well, weren't well, able to like get everybody to round their app icons. Well, it I could guess. it could have been just a transformer. So what they could have done is they could have had the launcher just take an icon, mm-hmm. scale it down a little bit. And, and then, then put, put that a white circle. circle behind it. It could have been a circle that was picked based on the uh, icon's color. It could have been sure uh, algorithmically made. Who knows? Yeah, because I noticed even some of the the first party apps that they have on there. Some of them have an actual like round version of their icon, and then others have yeah the regular icon scaled down with a white white circle behind it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I don't like it though. Yeah. Um, now this is the first phone with the Google Assistant built into it at the system level, uh, and this is what I wanted to talk about, given the like what differentiates this from the Nexus line, right? Because um, so, they they position this as right. It's it's a it's the exclusive. You're only going to get the Google Assistant on this phone right now. Mm-hmm. Are they going to bring the Google Assistant to other phones? This is the most important question of the year. I I don't know about that. Well, like, the the Um, answer has to be yes. If they don't, they are shooting themselves in the foot. So, let's pretend the Nexus line didn't exist. Would it matter then? Yes. Yes, because of Samsung. Right. Because everybody has a Samsung phone, except all the people whose phones just exploded. So, pretty much everybody still. So, I think... It will be very important for them to bring this to other phones mm-hmm. and potentially even make it available cross-platform in, in some, to some degree. Um, right. You know, on iOS, you can still link a Google account with your phone somehow. And, yeah, it, it'll probably be, like, the kind of thing where, um, similar to, like, Google Now is accessed exactly. through the Google app on an right. iPhone. and you yeah. just hit the Talk to Me button and it will do that. Right. Um, so, you know, this has really been weird. So, for example, 7.1 Android. Mm-hmm. It... It it's out, it's here, but where is it? It's not on Android phones yet. that were yeah. ready for it, called the Nexus line. Right. So, what's going on? Yeah, is that coming? I don't, yeah. So this is, this this could just be a thing where they want to have the, the hype drive mm-hmm. sales for the new phone, mm-hmm. and take all the money, and then, you know, maybe introduce it later. On the other hand, if they just pretend the nexus lineup never existed maybe they just don't care so yeah, I, I guess I'm, i guess the next question is we've heard that they are planning a 7.1 a 7.2 and a 7.3 and then presumably an 8 for next year mm-hmm. that's their schedule and okay. they're going to do these quarter quarter releases and that lines up perfectly so they launched seven and then this is the first quarter and then they have a, a 7.2 like in february and a 7.3 in 
April and then or June or whatever, mm-hmm. and then they have an eight sometime in September. Right. Great. Perfect. So sometime between now and then, this has to happen. That the assistant comes to other Android devices. Right. Yeah. And especially because, like, they have Android now available at the system level on other Android devices. Mm-hmm. And if they if they are trying to transform Google Now into the Google Assistant, right, across the board, if they want people to be using the Google Assistant on every device that they use, they absolutely have to make it available whether people have a Pixel phone or another phone, yep. right? Um, yeah, they can't tie it down. To no. just there especially since they're not hitting those mid and lower end price right, points right exactly now of course you know like i said they're they're probably trying to get the hype for the phone for sales mm-hmm. and so six months from now maybe this won't matter as much and they can just put it everywhere yeah but by then no more nexus devices will be ever made again so <laughs> so much for that um, now, one thing that uh, Nexus devices have never really been known for is good cameras. You know, right? they haven't been too bad in the previous generation. Right. But they still weren't like, for example, iPhone class cameras. No. Um, yeah, the the kind of... And that's been okay because the, the trade-off that you've always been making on a Nexus device is like, I'm buying this phone because I want the latest version of Android as soon as it comes out. Right. Uh and because it's coming out and I'm paying only like 350 400 maybe $500 for it, except for the Nexus 6, we won't talk about that one, uh, like I, I'm okay with a few things being uh, not as good as right. what the iPhone would have, right? Mm-hmm. So the camera's typically been one that we've had to make that contention on. Yep. Battery life is the other one that mm-hmm. we've you know typically not gotten the best thing of. Um, but now that they are at price parity with the iPhone... Uh, you know, they're not going to be able to get away with that kind of thing. Potentially. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to let them get away with it. Good. Um, so they claim that the camera is the best thing ever. Like, literally, they point at yes. this, this benchmark site, DxO Mark, uh, that thoroughly tests cameras. And now, I, I will stop you there. Have you ever heard of this benchmark ever no, I before have in not. your life? But a lot of other people who have been talking about this are aware of that site and are like, yeah, they're legitimate. I don't care. So nobody who is outside of the Verge slash Engadget slash who knows Ars Technica mm-hmm. market has any clue what this site is. It right. barely counts. Well, but I mean, like... I, just because nobody's ever nobody's ever heard of us, Ryan, does it does that mean that we don't count what either? We, oh, really? Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, that makes me feel great. That's why I made the Nexus. I mean, the Pixel TV. Uh huh. That'll count more. Right. Um, so I think this is cool. Um, I also want to mention that in this review, the other phones that are nearby, of course, are the you know S uh, the okay. So Google Pixel gets eighty nine. HTC ten gets one point below it. It's the best phone ever, except for the one that came out six months ago <laughs> that costs three hundred dollars less now because it's nine months old. <laughs> hmm. Oh, and of course, then you have the S Seven Edge and the Xer- uh, Xperia X, and then the Moto Z Force, uh, the S Six Edge, uh, and then the iPhone Seven. So pretty much every phone is about the same. Yeah, this barely counts. Right. Well, I mean, it's nice to know that, like, from a purely technical standpoint. The phone, the the camera is not going to be a laughing matter. Now we still need to wait for it to actually get into people's hands so that they can try it out and see what you know, like not just how the pictures turn out if you you know if you're a computer analyzing the pictures, but like how they actually look to the human eye, right? Yes. Um, and and you know how the overall taking a picture experience is. Um, but they've you know they're 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 not shirking on any of the the technical specs of the phone, right? It, or of the of the camera. It's a 12.3 megapixel camera. It's got an f 2.0 aperture, um, which is uh, almost the lowest that we've seen on a cell phone camera. Pretty good. Um, more importantly, the micron size of the pixels right. is gigantic. It's 1.55 microns. Yes. Celebrate. Woo! So at that at that size, it's effectively like an HTC esque ultra pixel mm-hmm. um, phone camera, which is funny because guess who made it? Whoa! Hmm. They also always have HDR plus on, 
Um, and for low light shots, um, they've done something kind of clever. Instead of increasing the exposure time of the shot that it's taking, uh, instead of what it does is it takes t- several quick exposure pictures and then combines them into one um, to, you know, get more detail out of the, the picture. Um, so, you're, so you're not going to get as much blur. Yeah, I think it's it's um, sort of interesting to to do that because um, ultra pixels, because their sensor is so big, they can suck up more light anyway. So maybe this just isn't added a bonus. Yeah, probably. Um, also, they showed off a bunch of uh, video stabilization features. Um, I think that they are able to do that because they have the advanced gyroscope required for Daydream. Mm-hmm. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. Of course, that also should be noted that um, it lacks um, optical image stabilization in the camera itself. Right, yeah. Which is funny because everybody complained about the 6P not having it when that cost a fortune, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 6, 6P? 6P. Huh, because I thought that one of the differences between the 5X and the 6P was that the 5X didn't have OIS, but the 6P did. No, you're thinking about the 6S and 6S Plus on the iPhone. Really? Okay. Yes. Maybe. Okay. Um, now let's talk about storage. Sure. This is one that I'm. Oh man, this is this is one of the uh, the biggest appealing points for me is uh, that if you own a Pixel device, you get free full resolution storage on Google Photos, and that includes photos and videos. Yes. Yeah. For up to 4K videos as well. Mm-hmm. Um. Dang. Yeah. That's huge because like. When you take a look at the amount of storage that people are putting into their Google Cloud stuff, um, yeah, Gmail, comparatively small, Google Drive, do people even know what that is? And, uh, and yeah, then, then there's your photos, which everybody uses. Um, and uh, I, did, do you know if you get this full resolution storage for life? Or well, is it like their standard for two years kind of thing? I don't think we know. Okay. We'll find out when the phones actually ship and everybody has them. Right. Um, it would be nice if it was for life, but I don't know how that's feasible. Even if it is for two years, that's fine. Yeah. I'm I'm especially um, tempted by this because, especially if it's for life, because, uh, you know, I take a lot of pictures on my DSLR, which is a 24 megapixel camera, mm-hmm. and I take pictures in RAW. So right now, I never, ever back up my RAW pictures to Google Photos. Um, I, you know, convert them to JPEGs, you know, after I do all of my processing, and then, and then I put them into Google Photos. Uh, but even then, you know, they're taking up a, a f- several megabytes a piece. Um, and if they didn't do that, then I would be very happy. Uh, battery life. So battery life, yeah, is the other area that we've always had to Suffer. kind of, yeah, just sort of just deal with it. I, so I, I, I know you have the 5X and I had the mm-hmm. 6P. Battery life was never an issue for me. Okay. Um, I could go at least a day completely with 40% left. Yeah. And I, it, on, on the, um, what is this thing called? Uh, One plus three. Mm-hmm. It's even better than that. It's more 50 to 60% after a full day. Um, so it just, it, Battery life has been better, but if this is the promise now of, you know, 14 hours of battery life for real, then we'll see. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, is that what they claim, 14 hours? I of? think that's what they were claiming. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, they're talking about quick charge, where you get seven hours of uh, battery life from just 15 minutes of charging. Woohoo! Presumably, that's Qualcomm quick charge. Hopefully. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think they have used the word quick charge before, but not to mean, like, the trademark... Quick well, charge. so the reason that matters is, for example, the OnePlus 3 here comes with this red cable and this special brick, and it has a special kind of charging name that is not Qualcomm Quick Charge. Okay. It's different. So different phones, different bricks, different tech. Mm-hmm. So it just it sort of matters in the sense that if somebody wants an extra brick, they have to figure out which one they want and then use it. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, they are part of the... the positioning this as a like premium phone um is of course supporting it right uh so they have 24 7 customer care with screen sharing built in uh right there on the phone um it's through the settings app just you don't I, like it that i just thing? i just can't even so you wanted to have its own app that's called like help help okay yeah yeah google help help 
Google, help. Uh, and then people start going to that app for like help for other things. And uh, Fine, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's 24-hour support. They can help you do whatever they need. It's almost like they're an assistant. <laughs> hmm. That would be really funny if yeah. you go through Google Assistant to get assistance <laughs> Google, for your phone. Google, call help. Oh, man. So I think that's a really cool feature. Um, so who offered that recently? Uh, and by recently, I mean about two years ago. Oh, right. It was Amazon with the Mayday feature on their Fire, fire right. tablets. So it's interesting that, you know, I, I've never heard anybody actually use the service. Well, have you ever heard anybody actually having a Fire? No, no I haven't. So that's part of the problem. So maybe like 5,000 less people will have a Pixel phone. And still not use the feature. <laughs> um, Apple doesn't even offer this feature. No. Hmm. Weird. I mean, I think I think it's great for them to do it. It's awesome. It's sort of great, but I don't know. So the people who need this the most probably won't buy this phone. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And we can talk about who this phone is for uh, a little bit later. Um, now... <laughs> this is also a feature, this next one, for uh, possibly people who... I mean, they're trying to grab people from iOS, right? Um, but, like, the people who are going to be enthusiastic about this phone probably don't need uh, help getting their stuff from their iOS device over to an Android device, right? Mm -hmm. um, but Google has made it super-duper easy to do that um, by including a little quick switch adapter in the box, which is uh, apparently this tiny little thing that has a usb type a female on one end and then usb type c male on the other so you plug the male end into your new pixel phone you plug your iphone's lightning cable into the other end and uh i guess it like i don't know how it communicates with the iphone and like you know yeah that's my question i mean what does it even pull out of it pictures uh so i think it's like contacts um yeah possibly pictures i'm not sure um the, yeah they they list in several things you know no. that you might want to back up from your iphone I, I guess that's cool um yeah i don't have much to say nobody's going to be switching from an iphone i don't know i mean this is this is honestly the first time that they've really competed with the iphone on its own level you know no no mm -mm. uh okay i disagree it's fine uh, now, I'm curious to see if um, we can charge iOS devices off of USB Type-C devices I'm with this little adapter. I'm guessing you can. Because we, 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 we'll have to try it. So, can can you do that? Can you charge an iPhone from an iPad with a lightning cable? But you can't plug... You don't have lightning sure mail to sure, lightning mail, I'm do sure, you? I'm sure there's a lightning to lightning. Okay. Well, because, I mean, you can do you can do that with USB Type-C, right? Is you, you can charge one USB Type-C device from another. So if the USB Type-C device presents itself as a thing that can charge, uh, why wouldn't the iPhone be like, yeah, I'll take that? Yeah, I just feel like Apple doesn't want the power to leave their devices. Well, no, I'm saying going the other way, that, that the iPhone will accept power. From... Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, they, of course, have live cases available for the Pixel phones, um, just like their previous At least instances. they know how to keep up with the things they've already made. Yeah. Um, now, I wasn't so hot on the live case that I got for my Nexus 5X. It's very slippery. Mm. And so I, I don't know if they've changed, you know, the kind of uh, what the surface is like for the live cases. But uh, if it's the same kind of material that they used for the original live cases, uh, I wouldn't recommend those. Um, they kept the fingerprint, fingerprint sensor on the back, um, and apparently you can swipe it to see notifications. Which this is the funniest thing. This sounds like the coolest feature. Oh, but it's so funny because, you know, six years ago when every phone had a little thing on the front of it, just like this, you know, back when capacitive touch buttons, most phones came with a little spot on the front, just like an iPhone. Uh -huh. And it was just a button. Uh -huh. But one of the features that everybody loved was the ability to scroll on it. It's back. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, didn't the Android, like the Nexus 1, have uh -huh. an actual ball? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Well, it wasn't an actual ball, but it was a surface. Okay. You could scroll. Okay. It's back. It's amusing to me how this has happened. I haven't been around long enough to uh, really remember that. I was here. Uh, all right, let's talk about those colors that it comes oh, in. Oh, man, this is... 
when uh, I was I wasn't watching the event with audio. I had it on one of my screens at mm-hmm. work. But when this slide came up, <laughs> I thought I thought it was fantastic. But other people in my office said this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. I thought it was pretty stupid too. I love it. So what are the colors, Ryan? Well, quite black, very silver, and really blue. <laughs> <laughs> And you laugh at it oh like that's so dumb. I do. I but, do laugh at it. But there's there's just it's so classic 2005 Google. It's so literal and so simple that it's fantastic. The you know, adjective noun combination. It's it's so good. I mean, if I had to I I probably wouldn't have figured out to do this. Just I like it. <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, everybody's just going to be referring to them as the black, silver, and blue, of course. Yes, absolutely. I um, I th- I think um, the blue one is only for the United States, which is sort of weird. And it's like the special edition one. Yeah. yeah. Um, fun fact: the like promotional emails that I got from Google, uh, both through I think the Google Store and through Project Fi, mm-hmm. neither of those mentioned the blue one. Uh, they just uh, they were like. Two sizes, two colors, and then they showed the black and the silver. <laughs> Just why why communicate with each other? I don't know. I think one interesting thing is that they decided to actually have colors this year aside from just the two two colors, right? Mm-hmm. So the Nexus 6 came with two colors. The Nexus 5 came with three. Yeah, but... Or the, 5X, the, I mean. But the 5X came with three? Oh, right. I think the, so, yeah. The was... weird blue one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the powder blue or whatever. Right. The Nexus 5 also had uh, black and white, and then on a Valentine's Day, a red one came out. Which yeah. was wonderful, and everybody wanted, but nobody could buy. <laughs> um, not bitter. Uh, so I think it's interesting that they actually are making a big deal about it, too. So usually they just say, oh, yeah, here, it comes in some colors. But this year they had to like make it a big deal because their names are absurd. Mm-hmm. I like it. Mm-hmm. So how do you think the three colors look? um colorful well it's kind of hard to know because all we've seen is like pictures of them right sure but uh you know i like when i look at the blue one the glass surface on the back just looks like it's made of plastic yep you know whereas like the black and the silver ones uh it i feel like it it looks like it works better well i will tell you my journey um i purchased a nexus 4 with it which had the beautiful digital glass back right and you know it had that nice little tile digital effect and it was mm-hmm. really really pretty because it would glitter in certain light and it was wonderful that's still your profile picture sure that's a wonderful phone i don't have it i don't even know where it is um so the blue one looks weird i agree it looks sort of like a fake phone like yeah it's like they wrapped it in some blue gel decided to sell it to you um but even worse is it has a white face right yeah um and let's talk about the white face phones should not have white faces because guess what happens you see all of the little sensor things Mm -hmm. and the screen size looks smaller than it really is um also when i looked at some pictures of like an xs 5x right next to the black pixel um the the bezel of the black pixel still isn't like true black. Mm-hmm. It's yep. this kind of like almost like the background color of our web page, kind of you know dark so, so dark gray. Two two two. Sure, yeah. Next. And uh, and so like that sensor, the little sensor area at the top yep. above the screen, still quite visible. Yep. And 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 I think it's 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 just amazing to me that they still have these phones with white screens on the front. It just yeah. Ugh. No. So what what phone did I purchase that? So I bought um, I did buy a second Nexus Six because I'm absurd, right? And I did get the silver one that time, and it had a black face too. Okay. Because Good. because at least Motorola knew what they were doing. <laughs> one time. Uh, this is of course the first phone that is going to be daydream ready, so that's coming. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't think that the whole daydream line explain daydream for anybody who isn't right yeah so okay so daydream is is google's kind of umbrella term for this line of virtual reality things um so like on the phone side it has to have a certain uh spec 
level to be able to handle, you know, having a, a good refresh rate, having the proper gyroscope and everything, et cetera, et cetera. Um, on the headset side, it's going, it has to come with like this little remote. Um, mm-hmm. And the, uh, I, th- I think all of the Daydream headsets are going to have some sort of NFC to like instantly pair with the phone and, and have it go into Daydream mode as soon right. as you slot it in. Um, so yeah, I don't think that this whole thing is necessary cuz you know, I have like an Nexus 5X, my sister has an Nexus 5. Uh I got a Google cardboard, you know, just out of curiosity. It was 35 mm-hmm. bucks. It works just fine. Yep. Um my sister got herself like a a a a more serious headset with, you know, a strap and everything so she can actually wear it and not have to hold it up to her face. Mm-hmm. Uh and you know, I mean she it's not like she's the most discerning tech enthusiast but like it works for her right? right so that's what matters um yeah and i i don't think that it like if the daydream label brings up the price i don't think that it it's worth that you know uh, to be honest i don't think it brings up the price of Probably the not. phone because as as we'll get to the specs here in about 2 seconds there's nothing out of the ordinary no, that would yeah. imply that it needed special support for Daydream. Yeah, okay, so let's talk about the specs then. Okay. Well, here are the least interesting specs I've ever seen in a phone. 5.5 or 5 inches of screen size. Whoa. And if you want the bigger one, you have to pay more, $120. And wow. they are they are AMOLED displays. Yeah. Um, Which is fairly the, unusual for uh, straight-from-Google phones. I think both of mine have been LCD screens. Um, I do not recall. The Nexus 5 definitely had an LCD screen. So the screen. the Nexus 6 had AMOLED because it had support for the um, ambient display, right. which required it. And as far as I know, the 6P did too. Okay. So, yeah. So their bigger ones have had it, but the, I think their smaller ones Yeah. Not. Uh, the, the 5X used an IPS panel because it was cheaper. Okay. Yeah. So it has a Snapdragon 821, mm-hmm. which is exactly one whole integer more than the Snapdragon 820, which is what every other phone right now has. Except so this, for mine. So this is the first phone to have the A21, and I do not know what the difference is between the A20. I don't know if the clock speeds are higher. I don't know if it switched memory types. I don't know if there's... You know, I don't think they're even using the highest clock speed that the A21 can yeah. handle, right? Yeah. Um, so they have two cores running at 2.15 gigahertz and two cores running at 1.6 gigahertz. Yeah, so it's it's a it's a chip and a phone. Great. Yep. Um, now I I do want to mention that it does not in anywhere near certainty beat an iPhone A10 Fusion. Right. Yeah. It's not even close. So if you want a phone, are you that's... talking about just for benchmark numbers or for what? Yeah, benchmark numbers. Cause, okay, because I like as I stated a few weeks ago, I don't put a whole lot of stock in benchmark numbers anymore because like I well... I tested out my tablet and I tested out my phone and my tablet had like twice the score as my phone, but my phone clearly runs better. Now keep in mind that your tablet, uh, that the benchmark that you were using Geekbench, uh huh, that was measuring CPU performance but not GPU performance. Okay. Which is a huge factor in how a device feels. Right. You and, think that, I mean, this is NVIDIA, iPhone, wouldn't they have no. uh, great GPU performance? No. Isn't that what the Tegra was built for? No. Okay. Mm-hmm. No, the, 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 the iPhone still wins in just every performance benchmark. Probably. And uh, I'm sure it's still smoother, but we'll have to see for sure when we actually get the phones. Mm-hmm. Um, great feature, though, is the 4 gigs of memory. Woo! Woohoo! Now, I don't remember if this is DDR4, but I'm probably pretty sure that it is. Yeah. They had a lot of letters and numbers associated yeah. with that that um, I didn't write down. Two battery sizes, of course, um, 2700 and 3400. It, and that's based on the screen size, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, I think that's just slightly smaller. I think it was 3500 for the 6P. Um, it's fine. It's average. Good. Yep. I'm okay with that. Same camera in both phones, unlike the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. And unlike the Nexus 5X and 6P. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and then you can get either 32 or 128 gigabytes. Okay, um, now. And you have to add $100 if you want to get the bigger one. Oh, this is, this is just ridiculous. So What's... nobody needs 128 gigabytes on a phone right. when you get infinite storage of photos, which oh, takes up 90% of your space aside from apps. Mm-hmm. Okay. But 32 
gigabytes isn't really that much these days because you know if you want to do some you know music caching or right you want to store a few pictures on your phone a couple of videos or you know you actually use more than six apps you know 32 gigabytes can go by pretty quickly yeah so here's the thing i like i've always had a 32 gigabyte phone right um because i've always gotten the bigger one and up until now they just haven't offered me more than that right sure when i was in the habit of of storing all 1700 of my songs in my in my main playlist you know on the phone um yeah that that was uh squeezing it right um so i i couldn't have like all of the games that i wanted installed on the on the phone and um now that i've decided that i don't need to do that especially since most of the time i'm listening to podcasts when i'm away from home and stuff you know so um i don't i don't have any of my music stored on the device i have so much space and i am not using any of it uh yeah you know i even i installed hearthstone which is like over a gigabyte for one app uh and i and i still have plenty of space left so i don't i don't feel the need to go up to 128 at all uh so one of the things that i would say is that 32 gigabytes is just not a lot especially on an entry model at this price i guess yeah I I would have preferred to see a 64 gigabyte model come in at this price and you know find a hundred hundred dollars more for 128, but then I wouldn't feel pressured to pay that extra hundred dollars. Yeah, so I think even better than having 64 be the base model, I think would be having 64 available as the plus fifty dollars model. You know what I mean? So you pay a hundred dollars sure. extra to get 128, but you pay fifty dollars more to get 64 gigs. Mm-hmm. I think that would have been a good middle ground. Yeah, that would have been okay, too. I wonder if they were just afraid of having too many SKUs. Possibly, yeah. Um, and I think they were also just like, well, people seem to like the iPhone pricing scheme because that sells like hotcakes. So let's yeah. just emulate that tier good, for tier. Good enough, yeah. Well, I think, th- th- don't iPhones have uh, three tiers? So they have 32, 128, and 256? Yes. Hmm. And I And I don't blame Google for being like... Why would why do we need to go up to two fifty six? That's yeah. not necessary. Well, and I don't think it's necessary for two hundred dollars. Right. I mean, I'm not saying it isn't necessary. If if you know you wanted to give me for five hundred dollars a phone with two hundred fifty six gigabytes in it, sure, do that. But but I don't want to pay more. Right. Right. Yeah. Um. So I think that's really great. So let's talk talk about pricing. Yes. Uh. It starts at six hundred and fifty dollars for the smallest, lowest configuration. Right. Yep, for the five inch at thirty two gigabytes, and then it gets more expensive. So if you wanted, for example, a thirty two gigabyte five point five inch, it costs more. Yep, so you add one hundred and twenty dollars, so that'll be seven hundred and seventy. Sure, yeah. and then if you wanted one hundred twenty eight gigabytes, it would cost of what size? Of the biggest. Of the biggest. Okay, so then that'll be eight hundred and seventy. Yeah, so it's a little bit expensive. Yep. But like I said, it's it's matching the iPhone's price tiers exactly. Right, but does it offer as much? Um, it remains to be seen. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about where it's available through as well for a moment. Um, I also want to mention the um, interesting thing that I, I don't remember if they did this before, but it's the Google Store financing plan. Oh, yes, yes. Is um, that new, or did they do no, that before? No, they... Woo, did they do that for the Nexus? I think they did. Last year, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I definitely didn't go with that option. I, I did not either, but it, it isn't horrible. So it, it, it says here to me that the 649 base model would be about $28 a month. And then um, the 869 fully maxed out model would be $36 a month mm-hmm. for 24 months. Right. And presumably you could pay more on that if you wanted to, to reduce your payments. Could you? Yeah. I don't know. Well, because, I mean, I did the math on them to see if you're actually like paying interest on it, essentially. Mm-hmm. And you're not. Um, you, you pay exactly the same amount of price. It's just that it's spread, it's spread out, out evenly over right. two years. And I have no problem with that. Yeah. I just bought it directly. It's easier. Right. Yeah. Um, I have, yeah, I have no problems with, uh, spending that much money all at once. Yeah. On a thing. I, but it's nice that they offer that ability, especially since, um, it is offered through at least one carrier currently, but nobody mm-hmm. likes contracts. So it's a way to have. <sighs> sort of contract pricing but without the contract oh man okay so this this part of the release has given me so much anxiety 
And especially when I take a look at around at all of my friends and and think like this is the only place that they're going to know that it's available through. Um, so yeah, they in the middle of their presentation they throw up a giant Verizon logo and they're like, and in the U.S. it's available exclusively for through Verizon. And I'm like, the hell it is. No way. Are we doing... Okay, well, it's not actually. Um, I'm not sure what legal sense they're saying that it's exclusive through Verizon. Um, but here are all the places it's it's available. Verizon, obviously. Anywhere that Verizon phones are sold. So that includes like Best Buy and, and you know... Places. Walmart and a few other retailers. Sure. The Google Store. Thank heavens. And, uh, and you can buy it th- through Project Fi, which is exactly the same as buying it through the google right. store Makes it, sense. Just, it just comes with like a project Fi sim card mm-hmm. um yeah so uh, i think it also is a, will be available at best buy i i mentioned that didn't Did i you, i don't I didn't yeah because because that was part of the like wherever verizon phones are sold oh sure i don't yeah. associate that with being the same but what okay well so for example verizon phones are also sold at costco but costco wasn't one of the buying options are verizon phones yes. sold at costco mm-hmm Oh, huh. okay. They have a, they have a Verizon booth there. Well, it's a multi vendor booth, but they're sold there. Okay. Um, interesting. So, okay, yeah. Let's talk about the fact that this is terrible. Okay. If you buy one through Verizon, you're a dummy. And do you know why? Because the updates, the system updates, are going to be coming through Verizon instead of coming through Google. Hmm. Allegedly, though, security updates will still come from Google, which makes you wonder. Yep. What kind of deal did Google just fail to negotiate? I have no idea. And it, it especially blows my mind because, like, if if Google is, like, okay, let's let's be honest here. Google is trying to make, like, as iPhone a product as sure. they possibly can, mm-hmm. right? Um, everything else in this presentation points exactly to that. Right. I Apple has let nothing stand in the way of them being in charge of the updates that go out to all of their phones. Right. Right. And this is why the Nexus line has always been marketed as, like, just to enthusiasts, just to developers, right? Because they couldn't sell them through carriers, because if they let the carriers get their grubby hands on them, then the carriers will be in charge of putting bloatware on them and uh, and and rolling out the updates to them. And that was unacceptable, so they were always sold just unlocked, straight through Google. For the most part. I think I think you could also get a 6 p on verizon somehow could you okay yeah but like but it didn't have the problem of uh the updates coming through verizon right i don't think so yeah so what the hell are they doing that is a great question um so the rumor i have heard is that sure it might be exclusive for now but um as soon as december at&t is allegedly going to be selling it to is at&t going to be in charge of the updates for that one we don't know yet this is terrible if, um, if they if they manage to get the same deal as Verizon, then we're going to have three different versions of the Pixel now, phone on different versions of the software. Now, I agree. Now, what if I told you they bundled the system update with the security update? Can they do that? Well, funny you ask. Apparently, the security update for the Nexus 6 was the 7.0 release for the Nexus 6. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not like they can't. It's just will they and should they and is that fair? Right. Yeah. Are they? Yeah. Are they pulling the hood over on uh, on Verizon there? I hope they are. I. So um, there's other reasons not to buy it other than that. Um, so if you if you do buy, buy through Verizon, you won't get updates in any mm-hmm. reasonable, timely manner. But also, it probably will end up costing you more because you sort of have to pretty much just buy it on contract. Right. Yeah. And your boot boot bootloader bootloader boot is locked. Yep. Bootloader. So yeah, it'll be a heck of a lot harder to now, change the operating system if you want to to can, like some other mod. Can you buy one unlocked and then bring it to Verizon? Yes. Okay. Oh, for sure. You sure? Well, it has the right radios, doesn't it? Yeah, Just but gotta I wonder. Pop in the SIM card. So for some reason, the Nexus Six can use be used on a Verizon net- network, uh-huh. but they won't let you. How are they supposed to know? Apparently, they just say no. But how do they know what phone I'm doing? Apparently, they oh, look okay. up the IMEI and say no. <sighs> I hate carriers. I know, me too. Well, okay, hey, Verizon. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so now we're getting into things that are not, that weren't mentioned in the keynote, but, you know, that are kind of 
our thoughts after the fact over over the course of this like most of a week that we've had to think about this yeah um yeah so buying it through verizon wrong way to go don't do that um everybody's been talking about the giant chin on the front of the phone um yep. it's got a lot of bezel down there on the bottom sure does um yeah i'm not i'm not a fan of that so either. um i will say that my phone here which uh-huh. is a one plus three has a chin uh-huh but the chin has a button on it. Whoa. In fact, it has three, I think. Yeah. It has one that you can tell and then two secret buttons that you can't see. Secret. And I have no problem with it on this one because it has a purpose. Mm-hmm. And it also leaves some screen space for no on-screen buttons. So, right. You know, something can be there. And then on the 6P that I have on the other side of me, it also has a gigantic chin, but there's a speaker Whoa. on the bottom of mm-hmm. that chin. So it's almost like... Again, somebody has no clue what they're doing. Yeah, especially since I mean the speakers on the uh, on the Pixel phone uh, s- stick There's, straight down. The, yeah, they they yeah. This is not ideal speaker design. We've gotten past this already. Google, come on. And it's and it's weird because HTC clearly has had dual front facing mm-hmm. speakers. That's what they've been known for for years. Boom sound. So where is the boom? I don't know. Hmm. Um, I'm also not a fan of where they placed their headphone jack. It's on, I, the, it's I, on the top instead of on the bottom. Um, I it's yeah. on the top, right? Mine's on the mine's on the bottom. This is on the bottom. Yeah, hmm. I prefer it on the bottom because when I stick it in my pocket, and, oh, and you know, then, plug and it in, then down. yeah, yeah, because that's how I naturally put it in my pocket. I guess I just never have that issue because I don't listen to things. Yeah, yeah. yeah I thought a lot about that while I owned a Nexus Five, and it was on the top. So, hmm. so uh, they did make a big deal about it in the presentation that it had a headphone jack. They did. So you get that at least. Um, now, uh, would I have been disappointed if they didn't include it? No, I would not have been. It wouldn't matter to me, even in the slightest. No. Um, yeah, I would have. I mean, I would have had to buy new headphones. I would have had to figure out a different solution. I wouldn't have been sad about it because, uh, yeah, I, I don't think that the headphone jack is a necessary thing. I just wish that everybody was using the same darn port sure exactly so usb type c with audio support yep and everybody would have headphones that were capable of using it yep good plan yes yeah it's not gonna happen no no it isn't um so we already mentioned um the google assistant Mm -hmm. so we know about that not necessarily being available hopefully it is i hope oh gosh i really hope it is um so the, 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 the phone's pricing during, you know, after we heard rumors before that it would be th- these prices and we all hoped that these were pre-announcement rumor pricings, mm-hmm. but unfortunately they were true. And so, as you know, 650 is the base price yep. and it climbs well past $900 after tax in most areas here in the United States, mm-hmm. but it gets even worse. Local currencies outside of the U.S. are, are, are different, but still comparable. Right. So, for example, in Australia... The thing costs well over twelve hundred dollars at base model. Yeah, it's incredible. And and there's no clear reason for that. And I I don't know if there will be some kind of adjustment in the future or if Google just decided to forget about other countries. Yeah, international something something. Um. Also, weird thing, they they typically make phones for everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, world phones and all. And these are world phones, so. They have all the radios that you could ever want. Right. And they come unlocked. and They're good to go. Yep. Well, that's great. And so what happened to Android One, for example? Those were never Nexus oh, yeah. devices, technically. No, they weren't. But didn't mention them. So will those get any updates? Are well, it's not the... like the Android One has ever been a program for Google to make their own hardware, right? No. And that's what this event was all about. Right. Sure. But this event also clearly shows a focus that google is using here and if google is not going to be doing that it's weird because a lot of their other things such as duo was allegedly being targeted at places right that india for example india don't have access to high-end phones Mm -hmm. so what's the deal i i yeah i mean it's I don't think they would have been able to hit both of those at once with one phone, obviously, right? No, they could have hit it with uh, an umbrella phone. Yes, exactly. I do kind of wish that they had a solution for that mid-tier price. I'm a big fan of, like, the 300 to $400 You know, and it could have range. been something very similar to the Moto G again. Mm-hmm. 
there's a Moto G on the market right now that's 5.5 inches, and somehow it's not an awful phone. It's okay. Yeah. It has some weird design flaw, such such as it is, mm-hmm. made by Lenovo, but it's still dirt cheap. Right. Um, and I mean, like, I'm I'm not sad about the pricing of this particular phone just by itself, mm-hmm. right? Because um, this is essentially, it, it is the phone that I've been waiting for, right? Um I've always had to make a compromise in the past because I, I, you know, obviously I want the latest version of Android straight from Google, but I also want good battery life. I want a good camera, et cetera, et cetera. And if all of the promises prove true, then this phone has all of that. Mm-hmm. And it's priced accordingly, right? Sure. Um, now that, but, no, but, but not everybody is me, right? Not right. everybody has the same desires as me. So I'm, you know... I think that it would have been smart for them to have something else to hit that. You know, I don't know. I don't know if the right choice would have been to continue the Nexus line and have a Nexus as the mid-tier no, thing. That doesn't Probably make sense not. to me either. Um, I don't know if they wanted. I don't know if making like a, a Pixel small would have been the right. Uh, <laughs> would have been the right choice. Well, it would know? have been like an SL. Or... Sure. Oh, right. Instead of an XL. Yeah. Uh, I, I X, guess XS. S. Just S. Extra small. Pixel S. Okay. Well, they already did a Pixel C. That's true. Letters. Uh, this is confusing. So I think I think all of that's great. And if, if the pricing would have been tuned differently, so if it would have started at $500, significantly less people would be crying about this. Right. Um, and more people potentially would have purchased it. Yeah. And we'll, we'll we still have to see what the... Uh... You know how it sells. Yeah. Uh, presumably, so the Nexus 6, which started at the same 649 price, mm-hmm. it sold the worst by far of all Nexus phones. Right. So, if... It also ne- was gigantic, which was like a true. first for okay. the line. And so if that's an indication, then that's bad. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, the 5X and the 6P, which were somewhat reasonably priced, mm-hmm. still more expensive than the previous generations, um, you know... Those sold moderately well, mm-hmm. so it'll be between those two things. Yeah, and I mean, like the the Nexus Six also had the problem that it came directly after the Nexus Five, which was hugely popular. Right. Um. And so, like everybody was like, "Well, I, I mean, I still have this thing; it still works. It's only been a year." Um. And I think that that's going to be a problem for the Pixel as mm. well, because I mean, like here I am. I'm like, I have a Nexus Five X. I just got it in December. Um. I don't yeah. feel the need to buy a new phone right so, now. I'll probably get the ne- the the you know the next Pixel next year. Sure. Um, or maybe or maybe a- after a price drop, you know, sometime next year. Possibly, yeah. But like, yeah, when we start getting into the like mid-year price drops, I'm like, I'm already looking forward to what's next coming one. next fall. Don't worry, I got you covered. Are you saying you're gonna give me a year of Pixel or what? No, what I'll, I'll get the next one too. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. Cool. Don't worry. Cool, cool. Mm-hmm. So, there's some more stuff here. Um, yes. Sort of just tacked on after the phone. Kind of, yeah. I'm, but, I mean, like, it makes sense for them to talk about it after the phone because it... it Uses it the goes, phone. Yeah, it goes with the phone. Which is the Daydream View. Mm-hmm. And this is their VR headset thing. Yep. The first Daydream Ready headset. Uh, so, they started off by talking about the design of it because um, it doesn't look like your typical tech accessory um, it's built for comfort. Um, it's covered in fabric, and it is thirty percent lighter than similar headsets. Um, it's kind of funny. It, lo- it looked kind of like you were sticking a rug on your face. Yeah. Um, before the announcement, um, one of the engineers tweeted a picture of some kind of texture, and nobody could figure out what it was. And of course, it was this thing, right? Because it looks it looks like a rug. Yes, <laughs> sweater, rug, something weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe maybe denim. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, when you stick your phone in, like I said, uh, it, uh, immediately launches into daydream mode. Um, I suspect that it's using NFC to, yeah. you know, as just being an NFC tag. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they, they didn't specify. They just said that it wireless, wirelessly communicates with your phone when your phone's put in. Um, and it comes with a little controller, um, to, I, they, they showed us like what the controller was going to look like, yeah. uh, at Google IO. Um, it's got kind of a little... Little There's, indented uh, so what like I love about it, area, right? What I love about the controller is that the two buttons spell out the word I.O. <laughs> <sighs> That's great. It's, it's classic Google. It's just 
makes me so happy. Um, they did they did have a little bit of like attention to detail here. They uh, the controller has its own little slot in the yeah, headset. That's so actually that you, really nice. Yeah, so you don't lose the controller while you're you know when you put it in the backpack. Right. Um, I thought it was really funny that the announcer uh, dropped the controller when he was talking about the little slot in the headset, so you wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, so you wouldn't lose it. Um, and then he like picked it up and stood there for a moment, like not knowing quite what to say. And he just finished with like, and it's, uh, it's built really well. It doesn't break. Doesn't break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I thought was pretty clever. Um, so yeah, this, uh, this headset with its controller comes in at $80. Um, and apparently it's coming free if you pre order a Pixel. Yeah. So, um, you will receive, if you pre order a Pixel, uh, you'll receive a promo code. It won't just come with the Pixel. You have to enter a promo code to get it afterwards. Why? Because Google. That's why. Aww. So uh, That is quite frustrating. Yeah. Maybe that's a good thing, though, because maybe if your Pixel's broken, you wouldn't be able to use your new cardboard. I mean, wait, what is it called again? Oh, Daydream View. Daydream, mm. yep. They also talked about a few, like, kind of exclusive VR content things that are coming. Um, so, J.K. Rowling. Um, I hear that there's a movie coming out soon about, like, Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. I don't know. And uh, they've got some VR experience to go along with that. Um, they showed some space games. Of course, they talked about Street View uh, and uh, YouTube videos, 360 videos. Wow. Woo! Yeah, that's cool. Um, I don't think any of that's worth much, in my opinion. Yeah, um, so here's the thing about VR content, right? Being that I was reading video game news for, you know, a good three years while doing 8-bit, right? Um, during that time, the only VR content that I was ever exposed to was games, 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 games. But now that, like, Cardborn's been out for a little while and Google has done some first-party stuff to support it, right? Um, I've been seeing stuff that, that, is a lot more compelling to me than games. Um, for example, uh, Google's, uh, I think it's called their Arts and Culture app, um, has a lot of like stuff that you have to experience in, in VR, um, like uh, tours of uh, museums, um, you know, models of statues, high-resolution pictures of, of paintings, stuff like that. Um, and that's like, Oh yeah, this makes perfect sense in VR. This is like this is really what I want to be experiencing in VR. Mm-hmm. Um, you can also like take pictures with, uh, you know, the, they have a, a cardboard camera app that'll uh, take like a three sixty degree picture, um, but it also record some ambient noise with the microphone, right? So when you go and look at that in, uh, in your cardboard viewer. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you get to look around this thing and hear like, you know, the sounds of the ocean or whatever sure. if you're on a beach. Or, so you know. if we did one here in the studio, you would hear the cricket behind me <laughs> constantly. <laughs> Always. Um, so yeah, I mean, like those kinds of things are the, the kind of VR content that I think that most people are going to find interesting. Um, and it's like, yeah, having a daydream thing is nice and all, but you, you can do it just as well with the $35 cardboard. Sure. It's, you know. I think this might I think one of the reasons they made this is because the cardboard, which is apparently fifteen dollars now, which is Whoa. Cheaper than it used to be. Um I think what's cool about this is it actually looks nice, comes in some colors, comes mm-hmm. with a nice little remote. Mm-hmm. Um you know, it's somebody that had if 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 somebody's never seen this before and they see well and you tell them, you can get this thing in cardboard, you can get this nice fabric one. They're going to pick the fabric one, even if it costs more, because it's right. not just a piece of cardboard. Right. Um, the the remote does, honestly, add a little bit, because you can do more once you have a remote. Right. Especially um, because it has the touchscreen thing on it. Yeah, and, and, like, you know, you can use it in the world, you know, yeah. so you can see your remote. It'll be your magic you. wand, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, there, there is a little bit more that you can do, but uh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. the basics are still there in cardboard, and that's not going anywhere. Makes sense to me. I'm 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 okay mm-hmm. with that. So I think we have to, um, you know, list our conclusions here. How was this yeah. event? Um, I mean, I was pretty excited about most of the things that they announced. Um, there's only one that I'm for sure buying right now. And that's the home, right? That's the home. Yep. Yeah. Um, I mean, I am yes excited for the Pixel lineup. This just isn't the right time for me to be buying a new phone yet. Right. Next year, probably. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, I like the event. It was okay. Um, 
shame about the pricing, but that's what you get when you just suddenly decide to compete with people who have been pricing higher than you for years. Um, I, I guess what I wonder is, now that they've done this, what do their other devices look like? So, you know, they had the Pixel C. Mm-hmm. That was sort of a flop. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, here's the thing. Okay, yeah, let's talk about this for a moment. It's so weird to have a Pixel, like a, a product that they named Pixel now, that's actually reasonably priced for what it is. Mm-hmm. Because up until now, right. what we've had is like, it's been like the best hardware that they could possibly design for this thing paired with some software that doesn't make sense for it and then they just like keep the price really really high so we had the chromebook pixel right that was a 1300 dollars chromebook nobody in their right mind is going to buy that even me like the biggest enthusiast for chromebooks that you're ever going to meet there's no way that i'm going to be able to you know actually buy that thing the pixel c tablet running android that didn't an operating system that didn't have support for split screen Oops. for an entire year after the tablet launched yep right um so <laughs> with the, with the, with those kinds of things you know it almost makes you wonder does google even acknowledge those things as pixel devices well i don't know because they call the bigger phone the pixel xl extra large it's not nearly the largest uh device in the pixel lineup it's the second smallest yeah Oh, uh, let's see. When I go to, hmm, I don't know. There used to be a Pixel subdomain. I don't know for like, like the Google Store. Yeah, no, for just just Pixel Google dot com. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, and now it, it and it used to redirect to the Chromebook Pixel and the the Pixel, Pixel C, C. But uh-huh. now, of course, it redirects to the phones. Uh huh. So I think they might have forgotten about those previous products, <laughs> as predicted. That's so funny. So I guess then the next question is, so what does this look like for upcoming devices? So there was a rumor that Huawei was making a uh, tablet, a 7-inch-like tablet. Would they do that? I mean, is that even a thing? Because if the Pixel lineup is for products that Google designs and manufactures, Mm -hmm. wink, wink, then Huawei wouldn't be really making it, except they would be producing it. Right. That sounds more like a Nexus tablet. Um, What about... The Chromebooks, then. Is there a C- Pixel Chromebook still, or is that name reserved for phones now? I, I don't think so, because, I mean, they if they wanted to have a name for the phone that they're not going to use anywhere else, they would have just used a new name. Sure. Right? I think they've got to keep the Pixel name around for the the Chromebook and for the, the tablet. Yeah. they just got to do better with them. <laughs> way, Honestly. way better. Yeah. But on the other hand, nobody's going to buy a 590, or fi- what, 599 tablet because it, you had to buy the keyboard separately. Right. So what's the deal? You just can't win. I don't know. Yeah. Um, also, yeah. will there be Pixel watches? <laughs> yeah. Weren't, weren't they rumored to be like going to talk about their own built watches at this event, but they didn't? Well, the, the there were a lot of rumors. So they were they were uh, rumors that they would talk about their next generation operating system, the merger between mm-hmm. Chrome and Android. Uh, Andromeda, Andromeda, right? Yeah, didn't happen. Um, and so, if there were Pixel watches, which there totally could be, when would those come out? Well, allegedly the program has been sort of frozen until sometime in 2017. Hmm. So, hmm. hmm. and. Uh, we got one final question. Yep. So what letter are we on again? We're on N. Correct. Now, what's the next letter? Dessert? Oh. Uh, gosh, why do you put me on the spot like this? Um, oh, no, omelet's not a dessert. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> uh, I'm not very good with foods. You know how they say, like, oh, you're learning Spanish. Do you know Spanish well enough to order food at a restaurant yet? Well, I don't know English well enough to order food at a restaurant. Thank you very much. I just know that I want a Supreme Pizza. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Give it to me. <laughs> right. Yeah, so um, the reason I ask that is because 7.1 presumably is still called Nougat. Nougat yep. And 7.2 will also, and 7.3 will also. I think it's really funny that we have to say presumably about 7.1, which has been out for a little while. Eh, and You, know, you well, never know. They could I mean, just the, suddenly redact it. The LG V10s launched with it. V20, but I agree. V20, which yeah. still isn't out yet. What? Yeah. Really? Uh-huh. Huh. Yeah. Google, in their infinite wisdom, decided to market this phone with the launch of 7, but it still isn't out yet. It might not come out until the 28th of this month, which is, uh, you know, could happen, but also unlikely because, well, why not just keep waiting until 7.1's ready for it, too? 
You just can't win. <gasps> mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's all I got. Where can we find you on the internet? I'm Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter at Ian R. Buck and uh, on IanRBuck.com for links to all of the things that I make. Good. And of course, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Mar- and of course on RyanRampersad.com, which does the same kind of stuff. Well, except better. Marginal. Than, than my website? Hmm. I haven't seen it lately. My website is still the single HTML file that I created in like five minutes. Well, at least you did something. Yeah. Okay. Well, have a good one. You too.